Did Saddam Hussein leave behind a legacy of development or destruction for Iraq? This question often sparks fiery debates among historians, scholars, and those who lived under his rule. Saddam Hussein, a name that rings with both reverence and revulsion, was a prominent political figure in Iraq, serving as the country's president for over two decades. His reign, marked by a strong centralization of power, was also fraught with controversy. His policies, both domestically and internationally, have left indelible imprints on the fabric of Iraq and the broader Middle East. Some see him as a torchbearer of stability and economic development, while others remember the brutality and repression that characterized his regime. Such contrasting views make Saddam Hussein an enigma in the annals of world history. But to truly grasp the essence of his legacy, we need to delve into his life and political career. So let's embark on this journey to uncover the life of Saddam Hussein. Born into poverty, Saddam Hussein's journey to power was anything but ordinary. Born on the 28th of April 1937 in the humble town of Al Auja near Tikrit in northern Iraq, Saddam was no stranger to hardship. The challenges of his early life marked by poverty and struggle were far from the trappings of power and privilege. He was a product of his circumstances, molded by the adversities he faced. But this young man, born into hardship, was not one to be easily defeated. His experiences ignited a fierce determination within him, a resolve that would become a defining feature of his personality and his journey to power. In the late 1950s, Saddam found a political home in the Ba'ath Party, a pan-Arab socialist party that championed Arab unity and freedom from Western influence. His involvement in the party began a chapter of anti-government activities, marking the start of his political career. In 1968 the winds of change began to blow in Iraq. The Ba'ath Party seized power in a coup, marking a significant shift in the country's political landscape. With the Ba'ath Party in power, Saddam's political ambitions began to take flight. He rose through the ranks, demonstrating a shrewd understanding of power dynamics and a ruthless determination to succeed. He was a skillful strategist, adept at navigating the treacherous waters of politics. His rise within the party was swift and calculated, as he steadily accumulated power and influence. In the political chessboard of Iraq, Saddam was a formidable player, always thinking several moves ahead. His ascent reached its zenith in 1979 when he officially became the president of Iraq, succeeding Ahmed Hassan al-Bakr. It was the culmination of a journey that had begun in the poverty-stricken town of Al-Auja, a testament to his indomitable will and his relentless pursuit of power. After years of struggle and strategic maneuvering, Saddam had finally secured the highest office in Iraq. By 1979, Saddam Hussein had secured the highest office in Iraq. His journey from a humble beginning to the pinnacle of power is a testament to his resilience, ambition, and strategic acumen. Presidency for Saddam was a testament to his strong grip on power. From the moment he assumed the role in 1979, Saddam Hussein centralized all authority, stifling any form of political opposition. His tenure was marked by his iron fist, his unyielding will, and a series of controversial decisions that would reverberate across the world. One of the defining chapters of his presidency was the Iran-Iraq War, which spanned eight grueling years. It all started when Saddam Hussein, in a quest for regional dominance, decided to invade Iran. The conflict resulted in a devastating loss of life and economic damage for both nations. It was a war that showed the world the length Saddam was willing to go in pursuit of his ambitions. But he didn't stop there. In 1990 Saddam Hussein ordered the invasion of Kuwait, a move that would trigger the Gulf War. His rationale? Kuwait was allegedly overproducing oil and driving down prices, hurting the Iraqi economy. But the world saw it as an act of unprovoked aggression. A United States-led coalition intervened and Iraq was swiftly expelled from Kuwait in 1991. What followed was a period of international isolation for Iraq. The United Nations imposed economic sanctions that would cripple the country's economy. The sanctions didn't just affect the government, they had a severe impact on the people of Iraq. Infrastructure crumbled, essential services dwindled, and the population suffered. Yet through all this, Saddam held on to power. His rule was a time of paradoxes. On one hand, he was seen as a strong leader who could keep Iraq stable. On the other, he was a dictator who ruled with an iron fist, leading his country into wars and economic ruin. Yet through all this, he held on to power with an unyielding grip. The aftermath of the Gulf War and the imposed sanctions led Iraq into a period of great suffering. Saddam's reign was marked by his iron will, his unyielding grip on power, 
and a series of controversial decisions that have left an indelible mark on the history of Iraq and the world. The year 2003 marked the beginning of the end for Saddam's reign. As the world entered the new millennium, tensions between Iraq and the international community reached a tipping point. Despite mounting international pressure, Saddam Hussein steadfastly refused to fully cooperate with United Nations weapons inspectors, arousing suspicion about the existence of weapons of mass destruction, or WMDs, within the country's borders. This refusal led to a chain of events that would ultimately result in the downfall of Saddam's regime. The United States along with a coalition of allies justified an invasion of Iraq in 2003, citing the urgent need to eliminate these alleged WMDs and to remove Saddam from power. The invasion marked a significant turning point. Saddam's once formidable grip on Iraq began to waver as the coalition forces advanced. By December 2003, this former titan of the Middle East was found hiding in a small underground hole near his hometown of Tikrit, captured without a fight by U.S. forces. Following his capture, Saddam faced trial for crimes against humanity. The charges were numerous and severe, including the execution of political opponents and the use of chemical weapons on his own people. It was a reckoning for a man whose rule had been marked by brutality and fear. In November 2006, the court found Saddam guilty, and he was sentenced to death. His execution, carried out by hanging on December 30, 2006, was a highly controversial event, televised and watched by millions around the world. It served as a stark reminder of the fate that can befall even the most powerful when they abuse their power. Saddam's reign ended not with a peaceful transition, but with a noose. His fall marked the end of an era in Iraq, a tumultuous period characterized by war, economic sanctions and widespread human rights abuses. But as with any historical event, the full implications of Saddam Hussein's rule and his dramatic downfall continue to unfold, influencing the course of Iraq's future and its place in the world. Saddam Hussein, a name that evokes a spectrum of emotions in the hearts of Iraqis. His legacy is a topic of intense debate with views as diverse as the people who hold them. Some remember Hussein's rule as a time of stability and economic development. This period saw the rise of a strong, centralized state capable of providing public services and maintaining order. Iraq's infrastructure, from roads to hospitals, was greatly improved under Hussein's rule. Moreover, the country experienced a surge in literacy rates and other social indicators. However, the picture is far from rosy. Beneath the surface of this seeming progress lurked a darker reality. Hussein's regime was marked by a brutal authoritarianism that had little regard for human rights. Political opponents were ruthlessly suppressed often through violent means. The use of chemical weapons particularly during the Iran-Iraq war stands as a stark testament to the lengths Hussein was willing to go to maintain power. These actions have left an indelible mark on the collective memory of the Iraqi people and the world at large. Critics also point to the economic sanctions imposed by the United Nations in the aftermath of the Gulf War. These sanctions, a direct result of Hussein's policies, led to widespread suffering among the Iraqi population. The human cost of Hussein's rule is immense. Thousands of Iraqis were killed, tortured or disappeared during his time in power. The full extent of these atrocities is still being uncovered today. Hussein's legacy is also marked by political repression. His regime's tight control over the media, education and other aspects of public life stifled dissent and fostered a climate of fear. In the end Saddam Hussein's rule is a study in contrasts. On one hand there was development and progress, on the other, there was brutality and repression. It's a dichotomy that continues to define Iraq's past and shape its future. Saddam Hussein's legacy is a complex tapestry, woven with threads of development and destruction. Saddam Hussein's life and political career were a series of tumultuous events. From his humble beginnings in al Awya, he climbed the political ladder and became the president of Iraq, a position he held onto for nearly a quarter of a century. His rule was marked by significant events, including the prolonged Iran-Iraq War, the invasion of Kuwait, and the subsequent Gulf War. His refusal to cooperate with UN weapons inspectors led to the invasion of Iraq in 2003 and his eventual capture, trial, and execution. Saddam's legacy is a tapestry of paradoxes. Some remember a period of stability and economic development, while others recall the brutality of his regime, marked by human rights abuses and political repression. These contrasting perspectives underscore the complexity of Saddam's legacy, reflecting the deep and lasting impact of his rule on Iraq and the broader Middle East. 
Saddam Hussein, a figure of power and controversy, continues to cast a long shadow over the history of Iraq, 